We Hi. are live. It's a beautiful Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. Uh, so we are on episode five. Talking about how to preserve your energy as an entrepreneur. Yes. So today's topic is what is draining you mentally and emotionally? Because last time we talked about environment and how your environment or the crabs. People in your environment can drain can you. Drain you. So let's talk about the crab that happens inside. Ooh. Yeah. Anybody got a crab inside? The that mental crab. Trains you. So what we mean by that is the naysayer voice inside. You can't do that. The doubters. Right? Every time that you Our take beliefs. action. Every time you take action and you are actually going, and I was just talking about this with the Facebook Live with Hannah that I was just on, how I used to drain myself so much every time that I would learn something new because I had belief systems that were holding me back from actually learning something new. Like I can't learn quickly. It's hard for me to learn. Same thing for money. We see it all the time. Which is the fundamental difference with money. If you cannot believe that you've earned or can earn 100000 you never have in a year. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You won't. Yeah. That's a belief. And That's if you... And we see people like uh, have the belief that it's hard to make money. Well, that just by having that belief, you're going to make it harder on yourself and it's going to drain your energy every time you make it. So if there's anything out there that you continue to constantly tell yourself, this is difficult, this is hard. This is hard. Sales, meeting new it's people. It's hard for me, I can't do that well. Doing new things is a challenge for you. Anything that you say is hard, it's a story you're telling yourself, chances are somebody else is doing it better. Same chances are somebody else is telling themselves, I don't have an issue with it and it's easy and effortless for me. Sales is like that. And it should be like that for us. It should. Should. The thing is, is that mm. when you think that it's hard, it will be. And we're talking about life force energy and how to preserve it as an entrepreneur. Let those things go. Those are lies that you're telling yourself. Somewhere along the line, you have adopted that belief about yourself. You decided to accept that into your life. There are people in this world that do not believe that. What if? And when they do those tasks, those tasks if? of making money and learning something new and presenting or whatever it is that you feel like it's hard for you, they're actually energized because they- What if it wasn't true? It. What if it wasn't true, that belief that people tell themselves? Yes. Just what if? How much more abundance, joy, happiness they bring into their life. How much they bet they, how much better they'd feel about relationships. Maybe their partnership. Maybe their relationships. Some people say, "My gosh, you know, my wife she never she never does anything right." Or my <laughs> husband, he's such a bump on the log. What if that didn't happen? What if we didn't say those things? What if we didn't even think those things? <laughs> what if? My gosh, what a world it would be. Well, we also work with people that say relationships are hard. Well, your wish and my command. And so all these things, these stories that we tell ourselves, if they're not elevating you, they are draining your energy. If they're not making it easy, if you don't have a belief, every time that you're doing something new, if you don't have a belief that's aligned with you doing it easily, quickly and having joy and peace and fun while you're doing it, it could be draining your energy. Try this. We like to say this a lot. It comes easy and effortless, easy and automatic. It's easy and automatic. Try saying that. I guarantee you folks. Yes. Can I choose you, to enjoy this process? It becomes effortless. It becomes enjoyable. It becomes fun. Even mundane tasks. Be like, I'm enjoying this easily and effortlessly. And the more efficient I am, the quicker I get done and the more I can move on to new and better things. And Aaron asked why crabs? Well, tell your story, babe. Why crabs? We Crabs. Yes. <laughs> crabs in the bucket. So there's crabs in the bucket. <laughs> so Aaron, there's a story I tell in our training, which I know you'll probably get to one of our trainings. You'll get to one of our trainings and you'll get to witness it. So before I got into real estate, <laughs> long ago, I worked up in Alaska as a fishing guide, as a, as a boat boy. And uh, this guy, Art, he was a great teacher. He taught me a lot of things about fishing. We caught king crab. We caught all kinds of dungeness. And so one day we were out throwing pots in. All right, we were pulling pots up, and this one pot only had one crab. Threw him in the bucket. Guess what? He stayed there. It was great. <laughs> Five gallon bucket. He's like little he self contained cool. ecosystem, right? Well, then we pulled up a crab pot. It had like, I don't know, 15, 12 crabs. Put a bunch of them in the bucket, and all of a sudden they started kind of climbing out of the bucket. They were making their way out of the bucket, and then one was almost out. And then the other one would pull itself right back in. This is a true story. Get back huh? down here. And so. 
we, I don't know why, I guess there's crabs. In our environment, we talked about last Unconsciously. Wednesday. We have friends, family members, naysayers. As if right when we're about to go do something, like yes. we're about to go into business for ourselves. They're like, why would you, you do, do that? that? That's the there's, benefits. There's of no your safety. Old job. There's no security. Right. You want to get a real estate license? Oh my what? Gosh. What's wrong with you? You want to get into sales? And a lot of times they're well meaning crabs that are trying to support you because they are trying they're going off of their model of the world and their belief systems and they're trying to protect you. They're doing the best they can with the resources they have. So how we were talking about it last time was in your external environment, and we all have crabs in our bucket and our external environment that pull us back from our success, but we also have internal crabs. And those internal crabs is that little voice that comes inside is like, who do you think you are? You can't do that. It's like the little devil that right? sits on your shoulder. It's like, what will people think? What oh will, my gosh. What will people think if you go do that? Oh yeah. my gosh. Or every time that you have fear, that's an internal crab. Every time that you sabotage yourself, we see people like so close to their success and then something happens and usually it's an internal thing that they do to their self that then projects it into their external reality to create a circumstance to sabotage them unconsciously. We just had some good friends go skydiving two days ago, Yeah, Cole and, um, and Ta. And they jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> Who does that? And they got married, which was, was awesome. Really, well, it was their fourth anniversary. Yeah. They get married each year. Every year. Yeah. Right. So, but that's most people say, why would you do that? Skydiving. It's it's crazy. That's there's a lot of fear. I'm afraid of heights, whatever. Those are those little those little crabs inside that that keep us safe and comfortable and secure. The thing about it is it really blocks and dams the flow of abundance coming into our life, yeah. whether it's making new money, making, you know, new friends, creating amazing clients, growing your business, getting into an amazing relationship, connecting with the relationship you already have, all of those things, our thinking holds us back and that's how it does it. But we, we call it the crabs, Yeah, the crabs in the bucket. Yeah. Anytime that you are waiting for the shoe to drop, like, oh, it can't possibly be this good. That is an internal crab. And those things drain your energy because the thing is, is that you're getting building up momentum and you're creating success and you get almost there and then you sabotage yourself and you have to start over again. Well, over time, this drains the crap out of you. Mentally and, and you're emotionally. Going up and down and up and down. Hence why we have yo-yo years, yo-yo weeks, yo-yo days. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. It creates inconsistency. And so there's a it. lot of techniques around this to, to get better focus. And so another thing that can drain you as an entrepreneur um, is when you're learning new things. Put your foot off that. So learning new things, just know because you're you're creating new neurology and you're creating a new behavior and a habit and you're installing an unconscious mind. When you're doing something you've never done before, be prepared to feel a little bit drained afterwards. So you want to schedule in rest and renewal. Like whenever we step out of the comfort zone and we do something really, really big that is stretching ourselves, it's kind of like going to the gym and you work out really, really, really hard. If you're smart, you usually don't work out the next day. You give yourself some time to rest and recruit and rebuild. Same thing goes for mental power and creating new behaviors. So schedule that in. Yep. Hannah had a good question. How do I know if I'm just afraid to take action or if I'm operating out of an alignment or misalignment or non-alignment, I guess, right? Um, so a lot of people, when we start off in business, especially entrepreneurs we're talking to, um, you'll take on any client, you'll take on all clients, right? Mm -hmm. And at some point you'll form, wow, that, I worked really hard for this client. And then maybe you didn't make the kind of money you wanted to make. So starting off, you take on a lot of clients and then you start to realize these are the kind of clients I want to work with, right? You start to form your niche. You start to turn down more people and you realize, Hey, these clients make me the most amount of money, the best return on my investment. And um, I might as well pass on others because I can spend more f more time with those clients, get better referrals and better reviews from those kinds of clients. We've all had clients that really energetically drain us. And in the beginning, you're really taking whatever you can get because it's something new and you want to start building up your portfolio of testimonials. And then as you get more confident and more selective, you can actually say uh, no to some of these people that you wouldn't necessarily work with. 
And also what is in alignment with you and what you're doing? Yep. Like I know that I don't necessarily thrive in doing admin work though in the beginning of our company, when we first started, we didn't have the capacity to hire somebody on. And so in the beginning, you're gonna do a lot of stuff that actually drains you, that's really not in flow with who what, who you are and what you're meant to be doing. Though knowing that you've gotta do some things in your business that you don't necessarily enjoy. And so you can choose to be in a positive state and find the amazing parts of that process and get into a really aligned state when you do it to where then the time will go by faster, you'll feel better, and you can even imagine it being done successfully and then reward yourself, whether it be taking a walk, going out in nature. So it's, it's building in those things. And then eventually you can delegate it so you're spending your time in your flow state. Chances are, if it's something that we know we need to do, like make sales calls, yeah. maybe maybe do a little more networking, maybe you know focus on content writing, write a book. Chances are, if it's going to grow the business, we need to do it if we're really afraid of it. The thing is, too, like stretching ourselves, right? A lot of people um, they do these uh, different design things. Um, what is it? Uh, what is it called? Something know. human design. Human design. Um, and they, they get these things and they kind of put themselves in a box. Like I need to be doing these types of things. Um, I agree with it. And I know personally, I, I have don't create a rule out of yeah, it. Yeah. Don't create a rule out of it. And I know that when I was in my master practitioner class, like I was telling you, Hannah, just a little bit ago in our, um, in our Facebook live, I had a vision that I wanted to be speaking and I wanted to be helping women, you know, and men transform their lives. But at the time, um, my belief systems weren't are were, weren't supporting me in that. And over time, I pulled back the layers of letting go stuff. And so in the beginning, I was draining the crap out of myself because I was doing my soul's intention. And I know that I'm doing the work that I'm supposed to be doing, why I came on this planet. At the same time, I was draining myself because I was letting go of belief systems and all these stories I was telling myself. And so a lot of times I would be really super drained because I would be fearful going into those scenarios. But over time you let that stuff go and you become more inflow and incongruent. Yep. Breaking through fear means definitely taking action and listen, starting a business, there's a lot of things that you have to do. Unfortunately, in the beginning you wear multiple hats. We all have done it and you just got to do it. Sometimes like Gary, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V is like, you got to eat crap. He's like, I'm willing to eat crap to build my business. And most people aren't. And yeah. so there's something to be said there about breaking through fear of what one is afraid of or thinks they're afraid of. Maybe they're not afraid of it. They just think they are. Yeah. Because a lot of times we, we have, I don't know. I, 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 I adopt the belief that sometimes our, our soul wants us to do things that our body nece isn't necessarily pleased about. You know, there's a, there you you're stepping up to the the task of being the heroine or the the hero in your movie and a lot of times you're going to be drained from some of the things that that brings along with it yep. and so just stepping up to the plate and then also scheduling in the rest and renewal it's a really really a really really important part of if you're doing something you've never done before and you don't necessarily have the beliefs and the values aligned with it yet then you need to schedule the rest and renewal and make sure that you take that into self-care yep what do you say about, um, suggest about being an entrepreneur as an introvert? For entrepreneurs that are introverts? Yeah. Uh, public speaking. <laughs> Get out there and network. Listen, we've got so much technology. We can hide behind, you know, email and text message. And one thing that's still great right now, the fact that, I mean, anybody can do a video chat. Um, you can get onto a Facebook Live. Video is going to be the thing of the future if they're not already. Um, like they were talking about 90%, 85% of content is going to be pretty much video only in the next two years, if not already. So get out there, put yourself out there. The best thing an introvert can do is truly break through fear and start meeting people because that fear is what's holding you back from making a lot of money and serving thousands of people. Yeah. And the one way that we've done it and we've seen people do it is just get up in front of people, little groups of 20, 30, 50, 60 people at a networking event. I mean, that breaks through fear. Before you know it, you do it enough, you're consistent and you're confident. And if that doesn't do it, then chances are you've got a lot of beliefs you gotta let go of. For some, they can't let it go. And so the best thing to do would be to come to our training. Yeah. We have a three day business training. That, that will help you with that. Will completely assist you in letting that go. And sometimes start small. I, you know, I'm an introvert. And I'm not a normal extrovert. And um, <laughs> so, so after we do a training, so after, it's we, so funny. after we do a training, 
three days. The difference days. between and I and our meta programs. We can do a seven straight He's day much training. More extrovert. Seven straight day training on the um, the next morning. I pop up out of bed. I'm like, I got lots of things to do. He actually wants to go out afterwards <laughs> and have a beer. And I'm like, Are you effing crazy? I don't want to see another person. So, I, I love people. I just don't. <laughs> I am. I need to go into my bed. And I need to close the door. She crawls into a hole. Have no stimulus. She covers the dirt. <laughs> you don't see her. You don't see her for three days. Yeah. That's just what happens. So right after the training, I'm like, got errands to run. I need to go get things. I'm going to meet a few people, keep the keep the process going. And then by about day three, I just peter out. I'm like, all right, I'm going to sleep for the day. So that's the difference between an introvert and an extrovert. It's just introverts lose energy after they're in front of people and they need to rest. Extroverts get energy. We, we harvest energy from others. And we're like, yeah, let's go do this. And then we peter out. So in introverts, um, a lot of times they'll be on the high spectrum of introvert, which is really, really introverted if they have a lot of fear. And that's where I was in the beginning. And now I'm more in the middle between introvert and extrovert because I've let go of the fear, but I still need to recharge my batteries alone. And, and introvert and extrovert is just a label. Yeah. Right. Don't make a rule out it's of it. It's not who you are. It's not who you are. It's who you were or it's who you could be. And you can change those. You can change it. Just like I said, I was very, very introverted. And then I now I'm more in the extroverted and I'm comfortable around people. I love going to networking events. I like talking to people and I like getting up in front of people. In the beginning, it wasn't that way. I, in fact, would almost have a heart attack even having the idea of looking somebody in the eye and having a conversation. And so now, because of the work that I've done over the years and putting myself out of the comfort zone and forcing myself to having these conversations, even if I made myself look like a fool and I stumbled over my words you and, do it and I sounded like a, an it, a, an idiot in my head, you did it I anyways. did it anyways. Just like doing these darn Facebook Lives, I'm gonna be real <laughs> right now. I don't necessarily, well, I'm starting to really enjoy them. We do love them. them. I, I enjoy fun. them now. But in the beginning, I, w I didn't feel like I was connecting with the audience because I can't see people. And so I had all this list of stories that I was telling myself. And I was a little scared to do it. And now I'm really enjoying it. And I feel in flow when I do it. And it's it's been kind of a thing I look forward to now. But in the beginning. Our phrase for 2018 was. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. If it sucks and you know you got to do it, get it done and do it anyway. Yes, 20, 2019 I, now, it's it's happening. I'm doing it anyway. It's happening. I strategically <laughs> set myself up for things I and that. I make commitments to things that are so far out of my comfort zone that I know that I'm going to transform as a human being. And I most of the time have a little fear and I have a little anxiety and then I use some of my NLP tools to get back into a empowered state. Mind tools. It still is new for me and you know I still feel those jitters and that's okay because I'm doing something I've never done before. By the and way. Know that you may feel drained after you do something like that and so I always schedule rest and renewal. There's some people they ask us, well how do you know the difference between anxiety and excitement? And well, they're very similar. Maybe it is excitement, how do you know? Right? Some people are like, well, I get really anxious. It's like, well, what if you're just really excited? We like to reframe that a little bit and turn it back on itself. It's like, it's just a story. What if you could tell yourself you were really excited to get in front of a group of people instead of you started feeling anxious? Very different yeah. philosophy of thinking, yeah? And I used to hate that. I used to like despise it and I would run from it, that nervous feeling. Now I lean into it. In fact, I'm like, ooh, so something good's going to happen. <laughs> if you're just jumping on, if you're just jumping on, this is um, how to basically preserve your energy as an entrepreneur. Um, mentally and emotionally, and just what's draining us uh, throughout the day, the week, the month, how we grow and build our businesses. Um, you know, comment below if you're getting this. If you're getting this, then just say, yeah, cool, this makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, so just wanted to, if you're if you're re-watching or, or watching the replay, um, comment as well and say, hey, this is good stuff, you liked it, and uh, maybe some points of uh, some, some wins or pluses you got out of it. And again, it's it's all this combination of stuff we've been talking through the entire series. It's not just the mental and the emotional, it's your environment. It's also the food that you're putting in your body. It's the daily rituals that you have. The information you're putting in your mind. Yes. Right? If we're plugged in, right? If we're plugged into the news. Yeah. Is that quality information? You gotta ask yourself that. And at some just point saying. at some point when you're an entrepreneur and business owner, when you're going out solo, you gotta start thinking for yourself. 
because you're going to get all these different suggestions from everybody. And if you're looking outside for your outside yourself for what all you, the answers, what do you think I should do with my business? That's do, going to be draining too. Do, do you think I should invest in Facebook advertising and, and, and spend money on Facebook? Yeah. 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 And then, and then, <laughs> but then sure, you get sure. all these, you get these mismatched messages. But what messages. if I don't? But what if I don't? Well, what do you think is going to happen? I think you should sign up for my Facebook launching course and I will teach you how to do that. <laughs> so people, let's get, let's get confident in like yeah. our own skill set and abilities. There's so many people that need to just, um, like tap into your inner, inner knowing, inner knowing. If I could give you a gift, it would be trusting your own intuition. The gift of intuition. Your intuition, by the way, is trust connect, yourself. Is your soul's consciousness, your higher self. We talk about higher self in Masters and in the practitioner. And it's it's your guide. Your, That's emotionally your draining. Your higher self already knows all the answers. You know what's emotionally draining? That's another one. What? Emotionally and mentally is going around and asking everybody for the advice, it takes like a lot you said. Of, it's a distraction. It's a too. massive distraction because if you keep asking people other questions, you're gonna get mixed messages. You keep mass asking everybody else what they think. Guess what? You don't have to do anything. Yeah. What a brilliant thing! <laughs> you don't have to take any action. Cool. I'm just gonna sit back. While the bank account. I'm gonna right. hang out. I don't need to take action because they haven't given me enough information to make sure that I can make this decision. And once <laughs> I make this decision, I'll think about it a little bit longer and to then make I'll go sure ask somebody else that I'm again. making the right decision. Because I might not make the right decision. I want to make the right point. decision. That's a good point. We should probably talk about um, making a So I'm just going to not quickly. make a decision about not making the decision. Yeah. To make also, the decision. analysis to paralysis, <laughs> that drains the crap out of your energy too. Analysis to paralysis, you know, thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Was it getting ready to get ready to start? I'm going to get ready to think about getting ready. To think about it. Oh, I got to get prepared. get ready to wait. My room's not clean. My desk is a mess. I should clean the house. Let's go walk the dogs. <laughs> All this internal conflict, and we do a process called parts integration in the seven day course that integrates all the conflict that you have inside internally, the crabs. All that internal conflict creates so much energy and drains you. And we're not saying that a lot of people have part of their thinking this way and part of their thinking this way. And if they just integrated those two parts, they might become more whole, more congruent. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying that that happens often in our training, but if we were to say that, you should come check out our training. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening. Watch the replay if anything that you missed and please share it. Um, Put some also, comments below, share with people who you think might get some use out of if this. If any of this resonates with you, um, we are offering a 30 minute deep dive strategy session so we can get to the bottom of some of this stuff. If you're interested in that. Um, we would love to talk to you if you're interested. If you're interested in transformation, total transformation. And we also have this really, really powerful audio that is a secret to success that we take you through a guided meditation process and show you how to install a very powerful goal in your future and it's what we use every morning in fact it helps us every morning with our energy it yeah. sets us up for success Absolutely. so if you're interested in that we want to share that with you totally so thank you so much we love you all see ya